Shalom and welcome to my show, Messiah. The heavens declare the glory of God, Elohim. I am Queen Sylvia A. Thomas, and I'm so glad you've tuned in again today. On the Hebrew calendar, today is the 12th day of Elul, the year 5784 of our Lord and King Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. Today, I will talk to you about biblical heritage. I told you about my new book recently, I now want, to, want you to know I revealed some amazing things about myself to you all in it. I told you that Hashem, Jesus, Yeshua, had revealed to me that I and my family are descendants of King David. We are the seed of David, the house of David that the Holy Bible tells us about. I know this is mind-boggling to some of you, so today I want to discuss that further and also talk about your biblical heritage as well. You may want to get your Bibles because I will read a few important scriptures to you. I'll start by saying every living human being on earth has biblical ancestry. Yes, we all come from someone that is in the Bible. The only interruption on earth that has occurred that would have, would have an impact on ancestry was the great flood that happened in Noah's time when all of mankind was destroyed except Noah and his family. However, Noah and his three sons and their wives repopulated the earth and there has not been an occurrence, another mass occurrence of interruption of population since that time. So everybody comes from somebody in the Bible. The Lord has blessed me to understand what my biblical heritage is because of the significance of King David and his family. I understand after many years of seeking and much prayer that it was a must for me to know who I am so that I could carry out the Lord's will for the house of David. Consider what 2 Samuel 7, 7 and eleven twenty nine in the NIV states concerning the continuance of King David's family. It'll be kind of a lengthy passage, so stay with me, listen carefully, and get your Bibles for 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 7, and then I'll read a few verses throughout 11 through 29. And it states, and I'll be reading from the NIV, the New International Version. After the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. So let me just give you a little backstory on that. So King David was concerned that he lived in a big palace while they worshiped God in the ark of the covenant, which was a little box. And he wanted to build a big kingdom, a big palace for the Lord, for, you know, for the Lord. And, um, Continuing on with verse 11. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest from your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who who will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he will be my son. And so what, what happened here is that the Lord was talking about King David's son because the Lord told King David that he's not going to be 
the one to build this this house for his for him to be worshipped in his son Solomon would and his he was going to establish his throne through Solomon and so, and it would be a kingdom forever and uh skipping down to verse uh, 16 it says your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be blessed forever. So uh, this is speaking of King David's family, his house, and also the kingdom that he would have his son Solomon to, uh, to, to build this, this kingdom for him, for, for uh, people to worship him in. And so Nathan reported to, to David all the words of this entire revelation. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and he said, so this is uh, King David now going to the Lord in prayer. And this is what he said. Who am I, sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? And as if it were not enough in your sight, Sovereign Lord, you have also spoken about the future of the house of your servant, his family. And this decree, Sovereign Lord, is for a mere human. So King David was, David was very uh, touched by the fact that the Lord had spoken to him about his house, that it would be blessed forever and that it would endure forever and that his son Solomon was going to uh, establish uh, this, this house to, for the Ark of the Covenant. What more can David say? This is uh, chap, uh, verse 20 now. What more can David say to you? For you know your servant, Sovereign Lord. You know your servant, Sovereign Lord. For the sake of your word and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. And then going on to skipping down to 25, uh, verse 25. And now, Lord God, keep forever the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house. Do as you promise so that your name will be great forever. Then people will say, "The Lord God Almighty over is the Lord God Almighty is God over Israel, and the house of your servant David will be established in your sight." Lord Almighty God of Israel, you have revealed this to your servant, saying, "I will build a house for you." So your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. Sovereign Lord, you are God. Your covenant is trustworthy and you have promised these good things to your servant. Now be blessed to bless the house of your servant that it may continue forever in your sight. For you, Sovereign Lord, have spoken and with your blessing, the house of your servant will be blessed forever. And that's the end of uh, that passage from uh, 11, uh, 11 through 29 and chapter 7, 11 through 29. And so what we, what we have here is King David is just, uh, so thankful to the Lord that he promised to him that he was going to bless his house, his family forever. And, you know, he said, I am a mere human and you're speaking to me this way about my family. And, uh, Moving on, uh, I'm going to read, have you read with me Psalm chapter 89, verse 3 through 4. It's just a short a reading. And, it's, and it says, you said, which is God, God said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations. And so again, he says he will establish his line, his line of people, his family. And in Psalm 1850, lastly, Psalm 1850 says, He gives his king victories. He shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever. Again, talking about 
uh, the descendants of King David. So we understand from these scriptures that King David's family is eternally blessed and would be forever. We also understand that it is King David's seed who would physically rule from his reestablished throne, the Lord's throne, until Adonai, Jesus, Yeshua, comes to reign on it forever after the millennium. So that's why it was important for me to understand that I come from the seed of David because there is a work for the house of David to do um, on this earth and we are a blessed family forever. So even though many of us have probably not ever thought about it, it shouldn't be too difficult to realize that, of course, people from the Bible still have family here on earth. My lineage, as I've just said, comes through King David, which means that I am a descendant of one of Yeshua's brothers or sisters. Yes, that is totally possible. Mother Mary, I call her Mother Mary, had other children after Yeshua was born. I belong to one of them. Mother Mary and Father Joseph's whole lineage comes from King David. Therefore, I am a descendant of King David. So, Mary and Joseph had other children besides Yeshua. And I profess to be one of their offspring and they both, Mary and Joseph, were cousins. They were cousins, and they both come from King David, the lineage of King David. And uh, so they are, they are descendants of King David, which means that I am also a descendant of King David. I do believe that in future years, Adonai is going to identify families and the 12 Israelite tribes. He will do this by once again allowing marriages within families as he always allowed in ancient times. So um, marriages and within families as far as cousins marrying cousins. Yes, he will is now allowing cousins marrying cousins because that is always what the Lord did in ancient times with his people. They, they often went, it doesn't have to be close cousins, but they often went back through their family to find themselves a mate. And that is how the Lord is going to bring families together over these next generations. It is part of the restoration of our people, gathering and bringing families together that have been scattered everywhere throughout the world, especially through the transatlantic slave trade. So, uh, you know, we've been, we've been scattered everywhere. And this is how the Lord wants to bring families together. Families will be able to go within their families to their cousins, not just any family, not your aunts and your uncles and, you know, marrying them, but your cousins and be able to uh, find a mate or a spouse there. I encourage you to pray and diligently seek Hashem and ask Him to reveal your Israelite tribe to you. My tribe, as well as my family's tribe, all those related to me through my maternal grandmother and those married in the family is the tribe of Judah because King David's, his whole family, including Yeshua, Jesus, is born of the tribe of Judah. This may come as news to some of my, fam my family who are listening to this broadcast. This is probably news to you. But yes, family, yes, family, that is our tribe. We are the tribe of Judah. I further reveal to you that this very throne that the, king, that the kings in King David's lineage ruled from is being reestablished today by me and my lineage. This throne, the throne of David, is Yeshua, Jesus Christ's everlasting throne that was given 
to him at his birth and he has appointed me queen over his throne. This is why it was important for me to understand my heritage, my lineage, my link to King David. It's part of that everlasting throne that will last forever. And someday after the millennium, Yeshua will reign on it. But right now he's reigning through people. What we, through our Christian upbringing, thought would be Yeshua, Jesus, coming back someday to physically reign from his throne is not, in fact, what is happening. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, has chosen people from King David's seed, like I just said, from King David's seed lineage to restore this throne in the day we are in. I humbly tell you that Yeshua, Jesus, has revealed to me that he has appointed me queen and ruler of his throne to reestablish it today and that me and my lineage will rule from it throughout the millennium, the 1,000 year reign of the Lord. I know I said a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. It's been a lot over the years as the Lord has ministered to me these uh, most amazing amazing things um yeah it's 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 just amazing what i am telling you is that it is now yeshua's yeshua's jesus's 1000 year reign and he is reigning but not how we thought he would he is reigning through human beings on earth and it is a literal reign a literal 1000 years this helped me to realize that people surely are the hands and feet and mouthpiece of our Lord. He would reestablish his throne and it would be ruled by people from King David's house, his seed, just like before. This is what those scriptures we read were telling us, that it would be King David's seed that would rule on this, this throne forever. And uh, even after the millennium, Jesus is part of King, King David's seed, seed as well. <clears throat> is, um, yes. So the previous throne of David existed before Christ, ruled by King David's lineage through his son Solomon from 1010 BC and ended in 586 BC. So this throne existed before and then it ended and it existed in 1010 bc ruled by king david and then uh ended in 586 bc and all of those coming from solomon's lineage were the kings over this throne so we read this in luke 1 32 and 33 that this throne was yeshua's you know, the throne that was given to Yeshua. And it says, he shall be great. And this is um, Luke chapter 1, verse 32 and 33. He shall be great, meaning Yeshua, Jesus, shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Hashem has chosen this day we are in, some 2,024 years after his birth, to reestablish and reveal his throne to the world. As he is initiating the process of establishing his throne during this 1,000 year reign, it is being preempted with his second coming. In other words, the Lord's second coming has begun. So the Lord is beginning this, has begun this 1,000 year reign with his second coming. It's a process, brothers and sisters. It's not instantaneous. It's not uh, how we thought it was just going to be like all of a sudden in one day. 
It's not. It's 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 not instantaneous. But what is important important for you to have faith in today is that his second coming has begun and we are in a period of preparation. That's what's happening during this restoration. There's a turnover in spiritually in in Christianity and in, in the world and in, in people. We are be, we are becoming the holy Jews of you know our our covenant people, Am Yisrael. We are becoming the holy Jews, and it's it's just starting. So it's yeah, it's it's going to take a while, but we are becoming the holy Jews that Jesus Yeshua wants us to be. So we are in a day of preparation, preparing for our Lord's full arrival someday. And how do we prepare? By becoming holy Jews who follow the commands he is restoring back to us. So we are being Baal Teshuvah. We are being returnees to our culture and our heritage because we are being grafted in again. That's what's happening. We are, you know, African Americans and black people throughout the world. My Covenant brothers and sisters, we are being grafted back into our own heritage and culture. And uh, so we are learning our commands. We are learning what the Lord originally gave to our people as the commands to follow, um, to follow, to, you know, to follow and to observe, you know, the holidays, the Shabbat, the dietary plan. Um, these are, these is, this is all the preparation that we're doing, we're turning into the holy Jews, and we are maintaining our our uh, Christian upbringing as well. We are not discarding that. We are not doing away with that. Uh, we understand the gospel of Christ and that He is our Savior and that He died on the cross for our sins and He is our Lord and our King. And so we still believe in those tenets as well. But we are also becoming holy, holy Jews. Yes, faith and patience are what is what we need today. Because this turnover will take time through our generations. Yeah, this is not going to be an instant thing. This is going to take generational change. Practice what you learn and teach your children and your children's children. That is how... The change the Lord is commanding will come. Teach your children and your children's children. What you learn, practice it and teach your children and your children's children, your grandchildren. If you have been following my teachings over the years, then you should know all about our restoration that is happening. If you are new, new to my teaching or want to refresh, then please go to my YouTube channel at Queen. Sylvia Thomas, and you can see and hear my previous, many of my previous shows. What I do want to remind you about now is, is our Lord uh, had a specific time in history that he promised he would restore his covenant people, which we are. This is that day. This is that specific time. Please see my show on YouTube on the date Seven, uh, July no, July thirtieth, two thousand twenty-three. Seven thirty twenty-three, for more on that, and you can watch that video and I talk about that. A friend of mine asked me, "What is the monetary value of what I am teaching?" That's a fair question, especially coming from a, a man who work whose work deals with finances. People want to be lifted up financially. My answer is to believe in the Lord Yeshua, Jesus Christ, follow him, obey his restored commands, and ask him that question. There is monetary value because in this restorative time, he promises to restore us physically, mentally, spiritually, and financially. So, but um, but often, but think about it. Often we don't get the prize before we do the work, right? You got to do the work. 
You have to step out in faith. You have to step out in faith and do it. But yes, there is monetary value because God wants to restore us financially. And really, he's already doing it for a lot, a lot, a lot of people. You know, whether you're a follower, believe in and and trusting in him devotedly or not, he's already done a, a great restor restorative financial blessing on a lot of our people. It is a remarkable day we are living in. Don't be dismayed by the chaos in the world. Our Lord told us ahead of time that he would come during a time of calamity and despair. But what... But what we must do is stay focused, stay prayerful, stay faithful, and believe in the glory and the power of our Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. Stay focused, stay prayerful, stay faithful, and believe in the Lord's glory. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to address something that seems to be a point of confusion. Please don't be hung up on Yeshua's name and variations of his name and those of God the Father. As we are coming into the knowledge of our Hebrew language and names, it does not mean we disregard our entire upbringing of what we call the Lord. He knows himself by all of the names and knows the heart of every individual. If one continues to call him Jesus, he knows himself by that name. If one chooses to call him by his Hebrew names, Yeshua, or any variation of it, that is okay too. If one chooses to identify with God the Father as Elohim or other names for him, that is fine. Some may want to call him Jehovah. That is fine as well. Hashem is not throwing out our whole history. It's up to you and what you better identify with, but don't hate on others if they identify differently from you. It is we who are being grafted back into our culture and heritage. We must enter in humbly and remember the love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness of our Lord. Always. We must remember that always. Praise God. I encourage you to get my new book, The Throne of David, Re-Established Ecclesiastical Guidelines for Am Yisrael and the Christian Church. It will help you tremendously. See the website on the screen where to get it direct from Amazon.com. And with that, I am going to say goodbye. And I uh, hope that you have been blessed by this message and I will see you again next week on Sunday at 12 noon Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. Shalom and God bless you.